In The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you play as the last Dragonborn, a mythical man, woman, cat, or lizard that must fulfill their prophecy of stopping the Eater of Worlds with a wide assortment of weapons, magical spells, companions, and playstyles. But what if you wanted to avoid all physical weaponry? Can you beat Skyrim by only using shouts? The limitations of this challenge are the same as every other weapon restricted challenge I've done. The only way I can damage an enemy is with shouts. No swords, no bows, no spells, no scrolls. That's the only limitation. I can still use healing spells, I can still wear armor, I can still use perks as I level up. Fresh out the gate, I'm not even going to attempt to say that this is a normal beginning to the game. It's not, and I don't care. After other prisoner made a run for it, I noticed something was off. Someone was dead. I ignored it and chose an Imperial as my race, because they start with plus 10 to restoration, plus 5 to heavy armor, have Voice of the Emperor as their special ability, which calms humanoid creatures for 60 seconds, and they have a chance to find more gold. I named myself Shouter McGavin, and a ghost from beyond the grave gave the order to send me to the chopping block. The first executionee was almost into position, and that's when it hit me. The captain who kicks the soldier's head onto the block was dead. With no one to kickstart the execution, it would never begin. I tried speeding up the game to see if anything happened. At one point, I had ratcheted it up to 500 times speed. Days were passing in mere seconds. It did nothing. At 1000 times speed, things got a little weird. And at 10,000 times speed, the game crashed. I then started the game anew, named myself Shouter McGavin V2, and the same thing happened again. I tried just resurrecting the captain, but she didn't actually exist. Then I tried spawning her, but apparently I sucked granola at console commands. Not willing to get fucked again, I reloaded a save from a previous playthrough where nothing broke, welcomed Shouter McGavin V3 into the world, and Alduin arrived to save the day. Getting into Helgen Keep was easy enough. I danced with a bucket while deciding what to do about my primal urges. I wasn't taking the amount of damage I thought I should be, so I upped the difficulty to adept, pressed onward through the caves, and exited out into Skyrim. The current predicament is that I have no means of doing damage to an enemy. My only option is to run away. After I stumbled off a cliff and died, I regained my composure and set my eyes on the prize. A dragon needs to die. My options were to find one and try to lure it into a city or a mammoth or something, or I pushed through the main quest line until the dragon arrives outside Whiterun. That seemed like the logical choice. After I stole as many buckets as I could from Riverwood, I ventured over the hill to Whiterun, whined a giant to death, and persuaded my way into Whiterun. I explained the dragon situation to Jarl Bulgruff, who dragged Farangar's stupid name into the conversation. He tasked me with tracking down the dragon stone and returning it to him. I went on baby's first mountain climbing adventure until I discovered Bleak Falls Barrow. I got overzealous in my attempt to ignore the bandits on the way to Bleak Falls Barrow's entrance, danced over nothing, and made my way inside. I attempted to sneak past the bandits inside, which didn't really work. The arrow trap in the first puzzle room worked to my advantage though. I furiously cranked the lever back and forth in hopes of solving the puzzle. When the arrows stopped flying, the bad men were dead. And guess what? In my general stats page, it shows that I have killed no people, so don't bother leaving any stupid comments about this. Skeevers are as susceptible to a barrage of arrows as bandits are. And then a problem. A problem I didn't even think about when I saw that 300 assholes voted for this video. Retrieving the Golden Claw from Arvel the Swift. So Arvel needs to be cut down before you can get the claw. But there's a giant spider that wants nothing more than to slurp on your innards like a slurpee and use Arvel's still alive mouth as an incubator for its babies. Can't damage the spider without a shout. Can't get a shout without getting past the spider. The spider is restricted to its little arena, meaning that luring it into the arrows is a no-go. My first thought was to use a glitch involving a platter that allows you to clip through a wall. I don't have a platter, but I have a wooden plate. If you thought for a second that I'd put one of my buckets on the line in this risky maneuver, seek psychiatric help. Believe it or not, the plate worked just as I thought it would, meaning it didn't work at all. As I ran around using my asshole as spider bait, I thought of something else. I don't have to kill the spider, I just have to cut down Arvel. The good news is that Arvel doesn't take damage when swinging away at the webs, and if you're careful, the spider will be positioned behind you and also won't take damage. With the spider bypassed, the problem was ending Arvel. The problem solved itself when I stepped on a pressure plate that passed through Arvel on a molecular level, destroying him from the inside out. 
With the Golden Claw in my possession, I got my first shout, and the next issue was the Draugr Overlord. I turned to Bethesda's favorite pacifist for the answer. I don't know how to say his name, so I'm gonna spell it out for you. Y-M-F-A-H. That doesn't spell soft. With this video's requisite wrestling reference out of the way, I could slowly lead the Overlord back to the swinging axe hallway and let it get chopped to death. I recovered the Dragonstone, exited the Nightmare Hole, and returned to Whiterun to give Fairfinger his stupid tablet. Good news, there's a dragon. Bad news, I'm effectively worthless. All I could do was stand there with my mouth slightly agape while the real heroes, and Irolith, battled the mighty beast. Once they killed it, I absorbed its soul and finally had a means of defending myself. Now, the thing about shouts is that unlike all weapons and armor types in the game that have skills that can be leveled up, shouts don't have anything like that. The shout you get is the shout you get. You can learn additional words to make it more powerful, but they don't get better as the game goes on like everything else does. The cooldown timers are the biggest hindrance here. Unrelenting Force's initial cooldown is 15 seconds, but there are two ways to decrease that time. The Blessing of Talos and the Amulet of Talos. The Blessing is easy to get, just activate a shrine near Dragon's Reach, though it does wear off after a while. The Amulet is harder, just because you have to actually find one. After I'd taken credit for killing the dragon, the Greybeards summoned me to their castle in the clouds. I immediately dismissed Lydia, because no donkeys allowed, returned the Golden Claw, bought myself an Amulet of Talos, and that was that. My shouts now cool down as quickly as they possibly can. It's either depressing as all hell, or an early advantage. I guess it depends on whether you're a glass half full or glass smashed over your head kind of person. Regardless, I was off to right run. I passed through Helgen to see what was left of it. There was this funny looking guy lying on the ground. Not long later, I got into an actual battle for the first time. The unimpressive wind shout actually does some damage. Not a lot, and it can't really send enemies flying yet, but at least I can defend myself. It can't stop a windmill either, if you were wondering. Also, couriers can't die. In retrospect, I really should have seen that coming. A dragon found me. I tried giving it the old wimpy scream, but it wasn't too impressed. It was a legitimate threat, so I lured it into some nearby necromancers in hopes that they'd kill each other. The dragon fucked them up quick, but it was hungry for more. It truly was a clash of the titans. I say was, not because this is a past tense retelling of my adventure, but because that dragon did not stand a chance against a mammoth and a giant. The dragon died quick, and it had something I needed. So I did the only thing I could do. I stripped naked and ran into the giant's camp to condemn the dragon's soul to several hours of agony inside my head. With its soul whimpering deep inside me, I ran back to the nearby hill to learn a new word of power, which allowed me to turn my mouth into a portable air conditioning unit. Frost Breath does significant damage to everything in its path. It killed a bandit before she even had a chance to draw her sword. The drawback is that the initial cooldown is 30 seconds, or either 18 or 19 and a fifth seconds depending on how the percentages work out. Enemies, plural, can be tricky to deal with. When they're lined up, you can damage several of them with one shout. But when you miss, you've gotta wait nearly 20 seconds before you have another chance to attack. Still, it's a hell of a lot better than the first shout I had. With my theoretical arsenal now upped, it was finally time to answer the Greybeard summons. I fought a troll that I could not kill due to it regenerating health before I could attack it again. But I think it fell down a waterfall and died. If it didn't, I don't want to know what killed it. So quickly, and so quietly, so gently and maniacally. After picking up Klimek's gear and being called sick, by a pointy-eared prick, I began ascending the mountain towards High Hrothgar. Once I arrived, I left the supplies in the chest alongside a child's doll. If the police ever decide to look in the chest, they're gonna have more than a few questions for these old freaks. Ernie taught me a new word of power. I took out a hologram with a sick 360 no-scope, and we went outside, where I could get a look at Master Bori's gaping hole while he viciously penetrated my heart with his gift of wood. My training is all but complete. I just need to fetch them the horn of Jürgen Windcaller. As I made my way towards Ustingrav, I spent far longer than I should have dealing with two giants. It was like eight minutes of wasted time. Their mammoths did some mating rituals, and I had a sick feeling in what was left of my gut that their snouts are for more than just eating. After about ten minutes, a lot of screaming, and a frightening amount of blood, both mammoths were dead at the foot of the staircase. I passed through Labyrinthian, but found nothing interesting aside from a few trolls, and arrived in Morthal. It was at this point I realized that I couldn't fight my feelings anymore. The challenge is to beat Skyrim by only using shouts. 
but my goal is to find more than 54 buckets by the time this thing is over. If Game of Thrones has taught me anything, it's that sometimes you do bad things for the ones you love. And I did some very bad things to the poor people of Morthal. It started off innocently though. A few cultists had tracked me down and attacked me, so I had to dispose of them. I went to the Jarl's building to get a sense of what I'd be working with, then went to the local store to sell a few things. I was taking the buckets upstairs for some alone time when Ingrid got in the way. She saw me stealing her buckets, but they were always mine though, even if she didn't know it. I killed her in front of what I can only assume was her kid. Someone else died, my bounty was up to over 2,000 gold, and I'd reached the point of no return. I made my way to every building in Morthal, taking what was mine by birthright and killing all those who got in my way, including three guards in the middle of town for all to see. As my pillage began to wind down, a mud crab emerged from the sea to risk its life to save the town. I knew I'd met my match, and I escaped into the wilderness. I then returned to my mission, tracking down a rape whistle or something. I got inside Ustengrav and fought the Draugr for the first time, and they were tougher than I'd hoped. Restless Draugr takes several shouts to take down, which in and of itself isn't awful, but you're normally not going up against a single Restless Draugr. Usually there's at least one, sometimes more, and a few normal Draugr, which eat up your attention like neglected children, making the Restless Draugr much more difficult to hit. Nevertheless, I pushed through the passageways, learned a new word, cut down some web with an axe that doesn't count, web isn't alive, and eventually didn't find the horn. I found a note in its place. I readed it real good and threw it in the fire where it belonged. I left Ustengrav, returned to Riverwood, rented the attic room, and found out that Delphine is a fucking witch. She won't tell me her master plan until she sees me mount a dragon, or kill one. She only said kill, but I'm good at reading people, especially people who don't even exist. I got to the dragon burial site before Delphine and engaged in a fight to the death with the dragon. Unlike my first dragon fight, I could actually hold my own in this fight, but let me tell you, the 20 second wait between attacks went from delicate foreplay to pinecone sodomy faster than you'd think. But in the end, the dragon died. I added another soul to my collection and Delphine filled me in on, on the plan I mean, yucky. I'm going to the Thalmor Embassy. Not now though, I've got other things to do. Because I'd already been to that side of the mountain, I decided to walk to Riften by way of Iverstead. Not all that much happened on the way there, though I did kill four men with a single shout showcasing how powerful frost breath can be in ideal circumstances. Things got very colorful as I approached Rift and Stables, then I persuaded my way into the city and went back to Riverwood to talk to Delphine. The conversation didn't last long, as she told me to go to fucking solitude on the other side of the world to meet Malborn. My travels to the northern section of Skyrim were fraught with danger and tense situations. Do I keep using a controller or do I unplug it and hit the auto run key? so I can go and make a sandwich without losing any progress. I kept using the controller and nearly died of boredom because my guts aren't ready for solid food yet. I eventually made it to solitude, entered the winking beaver, and gave what I could to Malborn. It wasn't much, mostly just armor and a few potions. I then returned to Delphine, got dressed in my costume, rode the pretty pony to the Thalmor embassy, created a distraction, recovered my items, and let the games begin. Just like with all other combat situations, multiple enemies make things more challenging, but the Thalmor aren't as tough as I thought. Two good shouts is enough to take one down. The bigger issue is that the healing spell is my primary defense besides armor. It ensures that I can withstand the damage being dealt to me while I wait for the shout to cool down. And the Thalmor like to use electricity, which drains your magic. The named NPCs in the solar were even more of a threat. But after a bit of dancing around, I made it down into the torture chambers, found the information I'd needed, set free a man who'd been chained in a cell, passed through the cave deeper into the earth, and fast traveled back to Riverwood. After more explanations from Dolph, I returned to Riften to see if I could track down Esburn. In an interesting turn of events, a dragon beat me there and began laying siege to the townspeople. They were more impressed with the pile of bones than they were me ripping its soul from its corpse. I didn't really feel like engaging in petty thievery, so I ignored Brynjolf and went straight for the Ratway. The Thieves Guild had a good number of buckets in their little hidey hole. I killed a few Thalmor, froze a deaf chick, and waited 1,000 years for Esburn to unlock his goddamn door. In the past, I've encountered a situation where Esburn failed to follow me out of the Ratway and back to Riften. So this time, I paid special attention to the senile old man and gently guided him through the tunnels until we were back outside and could bask in the glow of the sun. With Delphine and her least favorite uncle reunited once again, 
we could begin to lay the foundational plans for the end game. The next objective involved another long march through the snowy wilderness, all the way to the Sky Haven Temple. Time consuming, but not especially difficult. When I got the Karst Spire, I tried to use the speed running technique to skip the puzzle, which ended up wasting more time than it would have taken to just solve the puzzle in the first place. While Esburn examined Alduin's wall, I found myself a complete set of blades armor and an assortment of weaponry I could sell for gold that I won't do anything with. The time had come to return to the Greybeards, who were still waiting for me to give them back their horn. They performed their special ritual that made my legs go wobbly, led me out to the courtyard, and taught me another new word that I could use to ascend the mountain to get to the throat of the world and meet Parthenax. On the way up the mountain, I took a quick detour to say hello to an old friend. I absorbed another new word, fire breath, and used it to greet Parthenax. Fire breath is the heat equivalent of frost breath. He told me that I'd need an elder scroll to learn the dragon run shout. On my quest to find one, I killed a blood dragon, blasted a few wolves straight to hell, gained admittance to the College of Winterhold, and got word from Shrek that I'd need to track down Septimus Cygnus if I wanted an Elder Scroll. Before I went further north, I stole every bucket in Winterhold that I could find. I battled a few horkers, and as I did, this strange feeling came over me, almost like deja vu, like I'd been in this situation before. For the briefest of moments, my mind was flooded with images of a horker doing gymnastics in front of its parent. Once I'd come back down to Earth, I found Septimus's igloo, and the worst part of Skyrim could begin, going through the Dwemer ruins to get to Blackreach. I just hate it so much. It didn't help that the Dwemer spiders couldn't be taken down with one shout. For the most part, I just ignored them because killing them wasn't worth my time. I used the Become Ethel shout to violently plummet hundreds of feet and survive unscathed. The Dwarven Centurion had the potential to be a real pain in the ass. Luckily, his size prevents him from squeezing into tight spaces. So after I took the absurdly powerful armor from a corpse, I could enter Blackreach, refrain from making a reference to Jellyfish Fields, press a bunch of buttons, retrieve the Elder Scroll, leave the Lexicon down there because Septimus can go fuck himself, and return to the Throat of the World, where I could read the Elder Scroll at the Time Wound, learn the Dragon Run Shout, and fight Alduin for the first time. This took a long time, far longer than I expected. The issue, as always, is the shout cooldown. It's tough to attack Alduin unless he's on the ground, and he can't be on the ground unless you hit him with Dragonrend. It didn't help matters that the Blessing of Talos had worn off before I began this fight, which meant that I had to wait 12 seconds after hitting Alduin with Dragonrend before I could actually attack him. Fire Breath seemed to be more effective than Frost Breath, but they both now had a 24 second cooldown. This means that even in a perfect scenario, I can only do damage to Alduin once every 36 seconds. I'm sure you can see how this will quickly become a colossal clusterfuck of a situation. Parthenax also decided to sit this one out, so I was on my own. Once Alduin's health was half drained, he stayed in the ground, which sounds good in theory because it means I don't have to use Dragon Rend, but it also means that he's attacking me much more frequently. This was the first time in any of my Skyrim videos that potions actually played an important role in surviving an encounter. After about 20 minutes, I'd finally whittled away at Alduin's health enough that he fled to Sovngarde. The end is in sight, but it's still a ways off. I wanted to do things differently this time, so I talked to Esbern about what to do next. Unfortunately, all roads lead back to the peace treaty with the Greybeards. That pissed me off, so I screamed Delphine off the side of a mountain. I went down to find her body, don't ask why, but all I found was one of the rare water goats. Still wanting a change of pace, I returned to the throat of the world to kill Parthenax. I blasted him with fire breath, but he didn't even flinch. Then frost breath, he laughed it off. So, turns out, I can't kill Parthenax after all. Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. I then spent about 30 minutes convincing the Imperials and Stormcloaks to come to the Greybeard's Peace Council and pillage their castles for buckets. I'm not gonna bore you with all the little details here. The peace treaty was a monumental success. I blasted Jarl Ulfric, Stormcloak, and Delphine off the mountain. The Jarl helped me catch a dragon. I ripped off all my clothes, mounted the scaly beast, and we flew to Skaldafin. And guess who forgot to reactivate the Shrine of Talos? This guy. It wasn't the best decision I'd forgotten to make. But I still had a plan. The Become Ethereal Shout, at its lowest level, gives me 8 seconds of invulnerability with a 9.5 second long cooldown. 
Combine this with my stupid high armor rating and the healing spell, and I can pretty much ignore all damage while I make my way through this Goldavin temple. Before I'd left the temple and gone back outside, I'd learned to call Storm Shout. I'd never actually used it before, so I decided that the perfect scenario to prove its worth in would be in a fight with several dragons and a dragon priest. The shout did a significant amount of damage to Nakarin, but it also has a 4 minute cooldown, which is less than ideal. Luckily, there's a spot where you can avoid damage from all enemies. I went there, waited for the shout to recharge, used it again to kill Nakarin, snagged his face and staff, and hopped into the portal to Sovngarde. The fight with Sun was easier than anticipated. Fire Breath is quite effective against him. Three shouts was all it took to gain entrance into the Hall of Valor. I spoke to the heroes, we ran outside, cleared the World Eater's Mist, and let the final battle begin. And just like with the battle atop the throat of the world, it was horrible. Thankfully, nothing glitched out or broke. The fight transpired as it was supposed to. It's actually more or less the same as the first fight was. The same problems are present here. I can only do damage to Alduin once every 36 seconds. I tried using the Call Storm Shot a few times, and it did do a nice chunk of damage, but the 4 minute cooldown is a deal breaker. After about 15 minutes of shouting, Alduin landed for the final time, which must have pissed off Sun because he got involved and damn near killed the bitch. I, of course, landed the final blow, ended Alduin once and for all, and beat Skyrim by only using shouts. Just like in my last Skyrim video, you're probably wondering about the buckets. Sometimes, things go so extraordinarily well that you surprise even yourself. I shit you not, I collected 128 buckets. It took quite a while to get them laid out all pretty-like. Once about half of them were down, Udavin landed on them, sent them flying all over the place, and I just about lost my fucking mind. He eventually fucked off, I got all 127 buckets into a nice little pile, one of them went off the mountain when Udavin landed, and that was that. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Skyrim by only using shouts. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter, at MittenSquad. Join the MittenSquad Discord server through a link in the video description. And have a wonderful day.